What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Today is a good day for multiple reasons. One, it's a good day because not only did we get our first win of the season last week against the Oakland Wizards, 42-14 to in a dominating game against uh, Dak Prescott and a DK Metcalf combination that we really never saw pop off. So we got our first win of the season, AFC East. Everybody in this division is one and one but it's also a good day because we have more subscriber players joining the league. If this is your first time watching an SFL video, let me kind of explain what's going on here. So as you can see on your screen, none of the current NFL teams are here any longer. I relocated all 32 teams to completely different areas, completely different team logos and team names and did a fantasy draft. So all the players in the league are shuffled around in random locations. But not only that, I'm allowing subscriber players to join this league as a creative player. And you guys have been killing it in the comments these last couple of weeks. Lots of players. I think we're up to like 10, maybe 11, something like that. Lots of players joining the league. And if you would like to join the SFL and have your creative player in this league, it is not too late. All you got to do is comment down below. I will pin the template that you would need to use. I just need the name you would like your player to be, what team you want them to play for, position, of course, height, weight, what college you went to, and maybe a little bit about the you know appearance and description of yourself. And I will add you to the SFL and you can join this dynasty. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the new subscriber players that have joined the league here in episode four. First up here, we got our first punter of the league. That would be Jack Mavros. Shout out to at Jack sucks at blocking in the comments. Love the name, by the way. But I can tell you one thing that Jack does not suck at, and that is punting the football. 90 kick power and 90 accuracy, so a very strong kicker, also very accurate as well. Got a little bit of speed mixed in there also, and the cool thing about Jack here is he can lay the big hit with that 75 tackle. So maybe, you know, if you're a kick returner, returning the ball against Jack, don't be surprised if you see maybe a forced fumble or two in there. And he's 5'11", a buck 77, 24-year-old rookie out of Washington. So welcome to the league, Jack, and I hope that you can develop into the next Pat McAfee here in the SFL. Next up, we have QB of the Dublin Shamrocks over in the NFC East, and that would be Mr. Jesse Buzo Jr. Shout out uh, at Jesse Buzo Jr. 12 in the comments. And here's the crazy thing about this. We play the Shamrocks today. So Jesse, we are going to be going head to head with you, my brother. A 81 overall star dev, a two-year player out of Texas. He's 6'1", 210 pounds. And he looks to be a pretty solid quarterback. Very accurate. He's got 82 deep accuracy, 85 medium accuracy. Very accurate in the short part of the field, say 5 to 10 yards. He could pretty much make any throw that you would uh, possibly want a quarterback to make. Pretty fast, too. Nothing that's going to knock your socks off. No, you know, Lamar Jackson or uh, Michael Vick or anything like that. But a respectable 80 speed and a respectable 78 acceleration. So Jesse here is the new starting quarterback of the Shamrocks, getting the nod over Derek Carr. Just wasn't working out for Derek in Dublin, so they had to go a different route. And looking forward to playing you today, Jesse. I like you, brother, but I hope we beat you. But not sure if we're gonna, but it should be a good game. New wide receiver comes to town in Paris, joining the Paris Black Knights in the NFC North, formerly the Green Bay Packers, so I already like this team. We have Caleb Hayes, rookie out of Georgia. Shout out at Kraton, the dark one in the comments. So a six foot, 201 pound, 20 year old rookie. He is third on the death chart for wide receivers, but I wouldn't be surprised if he moves up there in the rankings because he could be a sneaky, sneaky good receiver. Pretty fast, 93 speed. He can accelerate at a pretty high level too. Pretty good route runner as well, especially uh, in the short to deep parts of the field. He could catch the ball at a pretty high level as well. And uh, Caleb Hayes, you know, he may be playing that slot corner role. Um, but again, he should be able to develop pretty quick. And I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes a staple wide receiver in the league. So welcome to the league, Caleb. Happy to have you. Hope you have much success over in Paris. Got another tight end joining the SFL here. Going to be teammate of another subscriber, Arturo 
Esquivel, the linebacker of the Austin, or I'm sorry, I said Austin Armadillos. That was my team in the Cupcake Relocation franchise. Go check it out if you've never seen it. But these are the Albuquerque Armadillos, and we have Bjorn Jeffrey here. So Bjorn is going to be the starting uh, tight end off the rip, six foot five, 215 pounds, a 23 year old rookie out of Colorado. And he's got some good upside as well. Pretty fast for a tight end. 83 speed is nothing to scoff at, but he is a very good short route runner at 88. And also some very good secondary abilities with trucking and stiff arm. So basically, you know, you just want to throw a dink and dunk pass down to Bjorn and get some good blocks set for him and get the heck out of the way because he's going to run some guys over. He's going to stiff arm some people. So I'm sure the Armadillos will be looking to Bjorn here in, you know, like some third and short, third and medium situations. I'm sure he will be a good target. But uh, welcome to the league, Bjorn. Shout out to at Ethan Fontenot. 213 or 2013 sorry in the comments welcome to the sfl brother happy to have you and last but not least we have the first sibling subscriber duo here in the sfl we got michael briner brother of james briner who plays over on the austin lumberjacks as a tight end who are in our division michael here will be joining the league as well a 25 year old rookie out of north carolina he's six feet tall 225 pounds and he looks to be a pretty good linebacker as well. I'm try I try to make the subscribers, you know, high 70s, low 80s. I don't want to make it too crazy. I want to make you young with a development trait. Hopefully watch you develop in the league. So that's kind of the theme I'm going for for our subscribers. But Michael is definitely a uh, speed rusher coming off the edge. Not the best at power moves, but a pretty good finesse, uh, finesse rusher at 83. He can lay the big hit. He's got 91 speed, so very fast for a linebacker. Kind of reminds me of like a uh, Josh Allen type maybe coming off the edge. But I'm sure Michael will be able to rack up the sacks with the best of them. He's still very young and already has a pretty high floor. And I'm sure a pretty high ceiling as well. So, again, if I missed anybody, sorry. You guys are killing it in the comments. The comments are pouring in left and right. If I did forget anybody, please let me know. And again, if you would like to join the SFL, just comment down below your player and everything that's in that template, and I will get you added. So before we dive into our game here, let's check out all your guys' teams and how you are doing in your respective division. Starting out here in the AFC North, Canton Condors, that is Eli Sokowitz, the safety. You guys are a one and one behind the two and O. Columbus Caps so right there in the thick of things for first place in the division don't have anybody in the AFC South yet so if you would like to join we got the or and I'm gonna try to remember these names we got the Orlando Orbits the St. Louis Bulls Houston Oilers throwback team rejoining the league and the Memphis River Hogs moving on over to the AFC East of course this is our division we have the everybody's one and one every team is one and one so something's gonna probably shift up today but we got the Austin Lumberjacks with James Briner, the tight end, and Michael Yakin, the quarterback, who absolutely killed it last week with over 300 yards. Going to be playing them again some point in this season. I think somewhere like week 11, something like that, week 10, week 11. So very curious to see how that matchup is going to play out. And then over here in the AFC West, we got the Austin, I'm going to do it again, Austin Armadillos. Go check out the Madden 23 Cupcake Relocation franchise, why don't you? It's the Albuquerque Armadillos with Arturo Esquivel and new subscriber uh, Bjorn Jeffrey, the tight end, going to be on that team. And then, of course, the Wizards, we have Michael Briner, who just joined the league. You guys are 0-2, and the Armadillos are 2-0. But again, it's still a very, very young campaign, and anything can happen here in the early stages. NFC North, we got the uh, Paris Black Knights, formerly the Green Bay Packers, Caleb Hayes, the wide receiver. So you guys are only one game back from the Louisville Desperados. And oh, I just realized it says the freaking city on there. Wasn't even paying attention, so that one is my bad. NFC South got a couple subscribers here as well. Yeezy Fuentes, the wide receiver. Your team is undefeated, my man, 2-0. So off to a very, very good campaign. And then the San Juan Tigers with Nick Stoyer, the other wide receiver. You guys are 1-1. One one. So interesting to see how some of these uh, storylines are going to play out. Dublin Shamrocks, who of course have Jesse Buzo Jr., the new quarterback that we're going to be playing today. You guys are 0-2, but playing me on the sticks, I think you got a pretty good chance of uh, being 1-2. and two. Although, I did crush it in the last game, so, you know, anything could happen. 
And then last but not least, in the NFC West, we got our new and first punter, Jack Mavros. Your team is 1-1 one one as well. The Portland Steamers are 2-0 in that division. I had some other comments of subscribers that wanted to join, but you guys didn't leave a template down there for me. So if you want to join, you got to make sure I know who it is I'm adding, what your name is, etc., etc. So that is how you guys stack up so far in the SFL. Going to be looking forward to tracking your progress as we move forward. Get a real quick peek ski at the Shamrocks roster, then we'll dive into gameplay. Of course, I just showed you Je Jesse Buzo Jr., is the quarterback Derek Carr is benched so good for Derek Jameer Gibbs and Jerome Ford are the running backs Jerome Ford on the Browns he's a pretty good player Nick Ballore a longtime fullback and then wide receivers you got Debo Jesse and you also got Gabe Davis Kendrick Bourne out here and Sky Moore so you got some targets to throw it to and we're gonna have to keep eyes on Debo I presume all game you also got Hawk but he's injured so Luke Musgrave the current Green Bay Packers here along with uh, Jeremy Ruckert Offensive line, we got Jake Matthews, very good left tackle. Connor McGovern, pretty good guard. Aaron Brewer and Michael Dieter kind of lacking at the center position. Cam Jurgens, kind of same thing. Solomon Kinley. And then Andrew Wiley, pretty good right tackle. So offensive line is okay. Demarcus Lawrence appears to be your face on defense as an edge rusher. Josh Sweat, also pretty good too. So pretty good. And Jordan Davis, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're getting sacked today. It's, it's going to happen. Devon Godshaw, Matthew Ioannidis there as well. Aziz Ojalari is the left linebacker. CJ Mosley and Nick Kwiatkowski, pretty good mics. And then right outside linebacker, Alex Anzalone of the Lions in real life. So I would say defense is your guys' calling card for sure. Marlon Humphrey, really good corner. William Jackson, Jackson rather, not too bad either. Uh, Darnell Savage, current Packer, is the free safety. And then Jabril Peppers, Former Brown and Giant is the strong safety. Ryan Santoso kicking the ball and Brian Anger punting the ball away. So that is the Dublin Shamrocks. Looking forward to going up against a subscriber as a quarterback. First time we're going to see that type of action in this series. And if you guys are enjoying the SFL so far and you are liking this series and you want to see me keep it going, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed because I do drop Madden 24 content weekly and you got to be a subscriber to get added to the SFL. So we are going down to Dublin. What's their uh, stadium called? Didn't even see it. It is called Cloverfield. I feel like Cloverfield is something like a, it's something. It's not coming to mind, but Cloverfield is definitely something. But at any rate, let's go all the way overseas to Dublin to Cloverfield and get ready for the game. Here come the T-Birds, fresh off a big, big W last week against the Oakland Wizards. And here come the Dublin Shamrocks and Jesse Buzo Jr., their two-year pro out of Texas. And I kind of like uh, the uniforms, I got to be honest, from both teams. You see, I got my T-Birds yellow on and looking to make it two in a row here, uh, feeling good confident about what we did last week and just looking to carry some momentum looking like we're going to get uh, the ball first here on offense to start here is our guy jordan love four touchdowns to only one pick so he's playing pretty good 551 yards to start this campaign but the real story is our young running back kyron williams he really stepped up these last couple games especially last uh, last week and he looks like he could be the real deal for us so we'll go ahead and start with Kyron on the ground needed one block there to hold wasn't able to hold the block on Jordan Davis or else that one could have been a really big gainer of field second and nine will come out empty might have Chris Olave on a quick step drop I don't like it so we're gonna give it to the receiver Oxmall that is Mike Oxmall <gasps> another subscriber player who joined the league uh <laughs> Thank you for that. I love saying Mike Oxmall on camera. Yeah, thanks again for that, at Rams fan. I appreciate it, but uh, it was a good play nonetheless. Let's come out single back here in a little strong formation. Going to roll out, and we're just going to give it to our fullback, Juvecek, who is on this team. Yes, he is indeed. Best fullback in the league. When I did the fantasy draft, nobody was picking my man up. He was just sitting there collecting dust, and I'm like, all right. I mean, I'll take me some Kyle Juszczyk. That's actually how we got our kicker, Justin Tucker, and our punter, A.J. Cole. Same deal. They were just sitting there collecting dust and a nice run there. Nice way to shake the tackle by Kyron because he probably should have been stopped in the backfield. 
but he was actually able to turn it into something positive. So we got ourselves a, a nice little drive going here. It's first and 10. I am going to have Kyron, I think, run an out route and maybe be looking for Zay Jones. Oh, no, it's actually Valdez Scantling. Nice pass there from Love. Beautifully dropped it in the bucket. If we would have thrown that thing just a hair further upfield, could have been picked. Darnell Savage makes the tackle, and we are moving with ease. All right, first and 10. Let's see if we can get Kyron going so far. I know Jordan Davis is going to be a problem in this one. I can already tell. These running lanes are not opening up for Kyron as well as they were last week. That much is for sure. And I actually did not mean to go back to a run place. So um, definitely, yeah, I don't know why I did that. That was not the play that I was trying to call. But nonetheless, let's see if we can pick this up. And if I can touch past that, oh, well, I did touch past it. But that is just going to be picked there by Kayvon Wallace. Four-year pro from Clemson. Actually, was a pretty good read, I thought. I did have Zay Jones getting open. And I tried to loft it over the head. See, if I would have just picked the freaking right play that I wanted to to begin with, that drive would have ended in points. But it ends in a pick. And here comes Jesse Buzo Jr., the former Texas Longhorn subscriber on this channel. No stats thus far, but that is all about to change as he gets his first real taste of SFL action. And Jesse, I'm sorry, brother, but uh, I'm going to send pressure at you. So your first snap as a SFL QB is going to be pressure, and you don't seem to mind at all. Jordan Poyer tried to punch that ball out there from Jameer Gibbs and was unsuccessful. Uh, we have some injured players. Also, Kareem Hunt, who's not showing up on that list, but he is most definitely injured. He's not going to be here today, so we have to lean even more heavily on Kyron. That did not appear to be uh, anything that we were able to do last drive. There's a nice check down there to the middle of the field with Devo Samuel. Buzo starting out two for two. We're going to go pressure again here. Pinch up the line, and hopefully if we can just get somebody in the backfield there, it's not going to matter. That might actually be holding. It was a nice completion to Gabe Davis, but it might be holding. What the fuck is this? It is definitely not holding. It is roughing the passer, Zach Cunningham. I mean, would have been a first down anyways, but come on, man. Can't oh, man, be giving him three down. yards like that. We'll show a little blitz here. This is probably going to be a run one would imagine, and it is. And tons of T-Birds are there to meet Jameer Gibbs for only a three-yard carry. Doesn't look like Gibbs really did too much last week either. So hopefully we can uh, limit him today as well. How about some good old-fashioned man coverage here? Second and seven. Buzo has three receivers to his right. And we had a chance to bring Jameer Gibbs down for only a minimal game. But he actually pushes the pile pretty nicely. And he's able to get this one uh, all the way to the 40. So uh, we're going to go pressure again, I think. Or maybe just... Nah, we'll just go man pressure may be the right move but kind of glad that we did not and buzo is locked in and laser focused as he's able to find his receiver luke musgrave the rookie or about to be two-year man now for the packers and this drive continues jesse i see you man i'm impressed i'm impressed with your uh, inaugural drive here for the shamrocks hopefully our defense can lock in and kind of uh do something here you might be getting sacked you are it's bobby wagner and friends not sure who else was back there, but I know big number 54, Bobby Wagner, the veteran out of Utah State, was there, too. That is, Jesse, how uh, SFL hit feels. This ain't Texas. This ain't the Longhorns. These are big body boys, and they are some hard hitters in the SFL. Nice defensive play by the T-Birds. I think we can uh, safely guess pass and shade underneath here. Uh, oh, oh, I had a chance with Pierce. It's a screen. Setting up a screen. Come on, T-Birds. We need somebody to get there, and it's actually going to be a touchdown. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Brandon Powell, of all people, six-year pro from Florida, was not prepared for a screen pass at all on that one. So great play dialed up by the coach. And the dubs, as I will dub them, the dubs of Ireland, Dublin going to get the first points of the game. 
And gonna need a good bounce back drive from J Love and the boys. Okay, Chris Olave, Press City. Um, they only have one deep safety too, so this could be a quick shot. But Olave didn't really win on the press, but Jordan Love might have found him, and he did. Huge gain downfield. Wow. Chris Olave, who was extremely quiet last week, only maybe two catches. Jordan Love, we know he has the throw power, and we know he has the touch. Chris Olave beat his man, just uh, William Jackson, just very, very slightly. Jordan Love put it exactly where it needed to be. And that was a huge play for the T-Birds. Just in case you guys don't know, I do try to go with uh, coach suggestions as much as humanly possible. But we are double teaming Jordan Davis. That proved to be a good call. There we go. Kyron still going, weaving through traffic, bobbing through traffic. So maybe double teams on Jordan Davis are the answer because we threw two bodies on him and Kyron was able to find the hole pretty darn easy on that one. Less than a minute to go now till the end of the first. Gonna hope that uh, Kyron can just power his way through. We got a block on the outside and Kyron started off as an inside run, but he was able to bounce that thing outside. And now we are more than likely gonna tie the scoreboard. I mean, we do got the uh, best kicker probably in NFL history with Jay Tuck. Way to respond from the Thunderbirds. After that last drive, we are leading in both passing and rushing yards, so you love to see that. But I feel like the Dublin Shamrocks have a drive cooking up their sleeves here. I like their end zone a lot. I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of that. I may have to uh, relocate a team here in Dublin because I do like the scheme and the design that's going on here. Buzo changing the play again, so let's see what he decides to do. It's going to be a little check down there to the tight end, Luke Musgrave, for five. And Buzo remains perfect. Let's guess pass and shade inside on this one. I feel like that's where Jesse has been doing most of his Bruh. damage. And there's another one to Musgrave. So, Jesse, looking like the real deal here. New quarterback in town. They had to bench Derek Carr. And the decision seems to be paying off dividends here as the dubs are moving again. Let's press up on the outside and I need Miles Garrett to get some pressure and win in the backfield and it's not going to help if I'm not controlling him quick enough there Garrett had some pressure forced Buzo Jr. to make his first incomplete pass of the game I think that uh, we are going to stay in man here though and Buzo see what he does we're actually going to drop Garrett back as kind of like an extra defender and Buzo's taken off he does have 80 speed so the one time that we had all the routes covered and locked up downfield, what does Buzo Jr. do? He goes and picks up the first down himself. Empty backfield again for Jesse. So he's liking these empty sets, I will say. Miles Garrett, I need you to win on Andrew Wiley. How is Miles Garrett not winning on Andrew Wiley? It should be a uh, sack on every player. It should be pressure on every play at least. There's no way that friggin' 77, 78 overall Andrew Wiley is going to hold Miles Garrett doesn't happen not in this world we're coming out 60 out jacks blitz though so we're gonna have oh it's a fullback dive and we're there to limit Na uh, nate Ballor. is it nate Ballor? nick Ballor? i don't know something nick Ballor, i think a at any rate we're there to limit him to only a gain of one and i feel like the only thing that makes sense to do in this situation is press and blitz you gotta press and blitz press and blitz i don't see how anything else will work although wow nice rpo Nice RPO. Brandon Powell's second touchdown of the game, too. How does that happen? That was a nice RPO because Bobby Wagner was about to end Jameer Gibbs's uh, career, season at least, probably. Great play, Rec. Come out single back here. A little TE attack. Let me see if I can. Oh, I was trying to roll out in Jordan Love, my, my man, my brother. That was not an accurate pass at all. I was trying to roll out there, trying to leak out, and it just never, never happened, unfortunately. We're going to come out of the single back because I feel like they wouldn't be expecting that at all. And may have Logan Thomas or Darren Waller, depending. Um, Waller, if we can get it there. There we go, Bam. baby. Truck somebody. He does. Waller's still going. Great play from Jordan Love and Waller. What a dynamic duo. I, hey, Darren Waller, look. Come on over to the Packers in real life, brother. We would be happy to have you. You're not happy there in... Where's he at now? He's uh, Is he still in New York? New York football giant? 
think he is. He was obviously with the Raiders for all those years. I should know this, but I'm just having a brain fart. Anyways, come to Green Bay is what I'm saying. Let's test the – oh, God, no blockers. Demarcus Lawrence unblocked. That's going to be a huge, huge, huge loss of six. I would like, ideally, to take some more of this clock down in a perfect world. Let's try Waller again, and the pressure was just there. It was taking those drag routes way too long to develop. And I guess the only good thing is Justin Tucker does have about infinite range. So, I mean, we could kick a field goal from here, and it would probably easily be a make. But let's see if Jordan Love and the boys have some uh, miracles in the tank. Waller, I need you to keep running. Darren Waller, a star in this game. Thought I was originally going to go to maybe Olave there on that coming out of the slot on that deep route. But I saw Waller had tons of separation. Run after the catch. We keep this drive moving. Get the ball all the way to the 12. Hopefully we can get a good pull from one of these guards. And look at that, man. We, we double teamed Jordan Davis. And he still got off his freaking block. What are we doing here, T-Birds? Okay, I like the potential hole here on the left side. We're going to motion over Zay Jones. Want to get one more extra blocker there and if somebody can just contain Jordan Davis which they I mean dude it is just bad news bears man Greg Van Roten our guard our right guard is just getting absolutely destroyed by Davis play after freaking play I don't think they would be expecting a screen pass in this situation so might not be the best call but we are gonna rock with it anyways and if we can get a good block oh look at Kyron with the juke oh ho, ho, ho. Did not get in when that's probably actually better because now we get to take a little bit more of this clock. But Kyron did not have the first down. He did that one all by his lonesome. So there's the block. I was trying to kind of juke back and go behind Ryan Kelly, but the juke was just deadly. Left Anzalone absolutely in his tracks. And now we are set up in prime time scoring position. All right, Kyron, this one's you, brother. Need you to get in, and he does. Fights past Anzalone, or Nick Kwiatkowski, rather, uh, the other white boy linebacker on their team. Uh? I can't tell him apart with that helmet on. Got to look for the hair of Anzalone, right? But Kyron getting his second touchdown now of the afternoon. This is actually dangerous territory because the Shamrocks have a chance to potentially double dip. We don't want that to happen. No double dipping around here, please. So we're going to send a little bit of pressure in the backfield. And, oh, Patrick Peterson just got mossed by Debo Samuel. And Debo kept going. So Jesse Buzo to Debo Samuel is looking like a lethal combination. Okay, we got a spy on the field now. And it's empty backfield. I need Garrett. Why is Garrett not winning? I mean, granted, that was a very quick pass, so it wouldn't have mattered. But Garrett should be winning every time you would think and he's really not it's audible into some zone defense here guest pass and i'm gonna have leonard floyd kind of maybe drop back and just kind of spy the field a little bit who's gonna snap this ball and where is he gonna go gotta watch out for the rollout he did that once before and michael pierce the big man gonna be in there to get the sack holding uh the the dubs to a field goal here would be an absolute win in my book so let's just go zone defense. We're going to guess pass shade inside again. And same thing. Going to have Leonard Floyd kind of drop back and just spy the middle of the field. Make sure nothing crazy happens. Buzo looking to roll out and just going to throw it away. So bend but don't break mentality from our defense. And that's going to force the Shamrocks to kick a field goal. And we're actually going to maybe have a chance to put up some points of our own. Which I feel like we probably should do seeing as how... The Shamrocks are going to get the ball after halftime. So 43 seconds, all three timeouts. Let's go get her done, boys. I have Logan Thomas or Darren Waller, depending. I think it's actually Waller, and he dropped it. He actually dropped it. Wow. We'll go mesh spot here. You know, uh, man, Valdez Scantling. I streak him as well. Could have Waller on the drag route. I'm looking Valdez Scantling's way. It's not going to happen, but Waller is going to get there. We're going to go ahead and call a timeout. I mean, we're not getting that far down the field. 
So I feel like we're probably going to have to take a deep shot or something if we really realistically want to score points. Going to have to get this ball out quick because we'll probably have pressure, but I do kind of like Kyron Williams in the backfield, or we were looking for Mike Hawksmall. And he was not able to get open, and now it's second and ten. Yeah, I think we just uh, go verticals. Look, oh, Waller's open. Come on, love, get it to him. That really wasn't the best of passes. <sighs> I wanted to spike that ball because we're going to have to do something like screen pass field goal, I think. It's probably the only way. It would be a 63-yarder from Tucker, which not saying he couldn't drill that. I'm just not sure if I could drill that. Now, it's very imperative that we do get out of bounds here because um, if not, that'll be the half. The clock will ultimately stop. Kyron, try and go, 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 and he does. Still 10 seconds left, too. Let's see. 58-yarder. I think that's well within. It's, it is well within Tucker's range. I just got to be quiet so I can drill this. Should be good, and that should wrap up this first half. Did he drill it? I think he drilled it. It's hard for me to tell. Okay. Tucker did drill it. Very good. That was a close one, though. That was a close one. 17-17 is going to be your score going into half. So evenly matched ball game up until this point. I am impressed with this uh, Jesse Buzo Jr., Debo Samuel, Jameer Gibbs, tandem that we see going on neither team can really get the ball going on the ground but we are both doing very well throughout the air or through the air and taking a look at some of the games around the sfl here we got the this is an interdivision game for us the brooklyn nighthawks and the austin lumberjack michael yakin slinging the ball pretty good a buck 82 and two touchdowns and they have a big lead against the nighthawks Rio de Janeiro Redwoods and Anchorage Snowhawks. No subscribers on those teams, but still, it's good to get a look at what's going on around the SFL. And that one looks to be uh, well within the grasp of the Snowhawks. No subscribers on this team either. It's the Gardner Minshew and Tyrod Taylor Bowl. So we'll just go ahead and get to the second half. Zero ball game here in Dublin. And what's Jesse Buzo Jr. and his team have in store? It's been a fun one, been an exciting one. That last game against Oakland, obviously, I loved it. We won, but it was pretty much a blowout. This one is more of a barn burner, as they say. So, Buzo going to come out single back, and got to watch out for Jameer Gibbs there. Bobby Wagner can't get him. Okay, well, Jameer Gibbs was more or less absent in the first half, and it's looking like he is uh, trying to make his presence felt here in the second. And I'll be honest with you, I would kind of rather deal with Gibbs then Buzo, because Buzo was a very elite quarterback in the first half. Let's have uh, LaMarcus Joyner try to get into the backfield. He actually does, but he got picked up by Gibbs, but it was just enough pressure to force the errant throw, and that will bring up second and ten. Press man seemed to be working pretty good in the first half, so we'll go back to it, and leaking out is Gibbs. Going to actually get the first down on that little extra bounce. Looking like we got to hold him to a field goal again here, boys. So can we do that? Debo, nice. Wow, the ball placement of that pass was absolutely elite. Threw it only to a spot where Debo could get it. Marcus Peters was not a factor in the play at all. Back corner of the end zone. Feet are down. Heck of a catch by Debo. Oh, wow. Valda Scantling, we should be able to hit him on a quick one here, which great ball placement from Love. These two quarterbacks are going at it, man. Very accurate. We have that one mistake from Love, of course. I would definitely say Buzo Jr. has outplayed us up until this point. But Love not far behind. He's pretty much going step for step. And we got ourselves a good old-fashioned quarterback duel here. Nice block there from our center. Switching the game plan focus to run inside with Kyron. That that definitely was the right move, I think, um, because this drive has pretty much been the Kyron Williams show. And you know what? I am perfectly fine with that. So that should open up some shots for play action, hopefully. We'll just go ahead and check it down to Logan Thomas. Nothing crazy there, but a nice pickup of seven. And Devon Godshaw. Now appears to be injured. That's the beauty of getting the run game established. You know, you get some good runs established, and that should open up some shots for play action. 
And what better time to do it than second and short? Let's see if we can hit Zay Jones, which, ah, oh, man. We had him there for a second, but Jabril Peppers had that zone of the field monitored pretty tightly. All right, T-Birds, third and three. Come on now. We got to pick this up. And I think Waller, maybe I should have hit. Yeah, that was on me, man. I had Logan Thomas. Should have just went for the nice little drag route there in the middle of the field. And kind of, we're going to have to go for this, I think. Screen pass again. I don't typically call my own plays, but I just feel like with the way that Dublin is playing, a field goal is not going to do us much good. So hopefully Kyron can pick this up, please. We really need him to. And oh my God, nobody was there to block Matthew Ioannidis. When you go for it on fourth down, when you're already in scoring range, it's a great decision if it works. But I'm sure it's a decision that uh, Coach Damon Sanders will be questioned about for weeks to come. And that is very unfortunate as we come away with nothing on what looks to be a very good drive as well. And now Buzo is just changing this play up left and right. So we're going to change it back. Probably going to have Garrett actually drop back in coverage a bit here. Nice route from Gibbs, man. This is the Jameer Gibbs show all of a sudden. Got to have, got to get them off of the field here, man. Got to get them off of the field. I don't see any way around it. So hopefully our boys are prepped and ready for the challenge. There's Yaya Diaby. Going to bring up third and long. And we need to buckle down and get this uh, Dublin Shamrocks offense off the field. All right, boys. Here we go. Here we go. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Oh my god, I hate this QB. Thank you for being subscribed to this channel. I love you. But right now in this game, you are doing your thing, brother. You are balling out. Why did I make the speed 80? I should have made it 73. Don't worry. Not going to go back and edit it. See what Buzo does here. It's coming out in like a strong formation. And, oh, need a pick. That was a dangerous pass. Looks like he was targeting. Maybe that was... Debo Samuel, or is that an offensive lineman? Not 100% sure, but at any rate, it didn't pan out. And if somehow, if we could possibly hold them to a field goal here, that would be astronomical. And somebody crash on Gibbs. There we go. Nice play there. Definitely a gambling man here as I'm coming out. Safety blitz. I know it's probably not the best call, or is it? Put your freaking hands up, man. Was that Marcus Peters? I mean, you had a pick. Gift wrapped, bubble wrap delivered to you by FedEx right to your doorstep. <sighs> I mean, he's looking at the ball. Come on, he's once well, he got his eyes closed. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Why is your eyes closed, brother? Oh well, that's why you don't have a pick. You gotta open your eyes. Field goal. I will take that as a huge, huge dub. They are gonna go up by ten, but as much better than going up by fourteen. Obviously. Pre uh, elementary school math will tell you that. But we just got to definitely end this next drive in points. How about this could be Darren Waller on a quick shot? And, oh my god, man. But we just got to definitely end this next drive in points. It was there. It was there. And I just waited way too long to throw it. So. Selling this game, man. I am selling this game. Oh, man. Go watch uh, St. Louis Sentinels franchise. My other series on this. I'm playing pretty good in that one. I am selling in this one, but a nice sack from Zach Cunningham. Finally. That should be our second sack on Jesse Third, as a matter of fact. So wasn't even aware of that. And looking like we're going to have to hold him to yet another field goal here. Because a touchdown will make this a near insurmountable lead and got kind of scared there for a minute but it's going to be third and long again and the question here is do we bring any pressure i kind of like a dime blitz so zone coverage with just a hint just a sprinkle of pressure really and that blitz is going to be coming off of the left side and that should be holding and it shouldn't matter because we do get the sack with patrick peterson it is going to be holding. We are going to decline that. And rather than we just got bailed out there big time 
Because rather than allowing points, we actually force a punt. And if Jordan Love, a.k.a. myself, this might have to just be a little bit of the Kyron Love show. So I can't afford to keep chucking picks. Here are your stats. Passing yards, we got the slight edge. Rushing yards, they got the slight edge. But the only stat that really matters is the score. And the Shamrocks definitely, definitely have the edge in that one. So there is work to be done here. I think that our boys are up for the challenge. And being second and two, let's just start out something safe. A little screen pass to Kyron Williams. Need some blocking. Of course, we have it. Nice move from Kyron. He's going to get this almost to midfield. Let's go inside zone to Williams again. It worked out pretty well on the last one. Tried to cut that thing inside there, but uh, Darnell Savage was there in good run support. And maybe I thought I saw, yeah, I did see draw as an option. It's second and six. I really want to continue going to Kyron for as long as possible just because I am not playing my best game with Jordan Love. Nice juke from Kyron. He's starting to put it together here in the second half, getting up to 66 yards now. First and 10, ball is on the 50 into Shamrock's territory now. And we're going to go to Valdez Scantling. Oh, how did he hang on to that? Oh, man. Oh, man. We had Marlon Humphrey right in the vicinity. Jordan Love threw a very accurate ball, but that was all, all Valdez Scantling. Give this man his flowers. And now I think we're going to go back to Kyron. I do like the coverage on the left side, but I just don't have a good feeling that I wouldn't throw a pick. Kyron's playing good, so why go away from him? Throw a double team block on Jordan Davis. No, not on number 93. I want it on Jordan Davis. Let's make sure we actually snap this ball. Kyron got a nice block from our guard, and he is in. But don't go anywhere. Thunderbirds are still well within reach. Our defense just played good on the last drive. We can have one more good defensive stand. This would be our ball game to lose. Going to play straight zone coverage for a while here. Although, okay, that's a nice play fake. And, oh, that could be us right there. It's Debo. Oh, man, Jesse Buzo Jr. going over 300 yards now and those three touchdowns. And Debo Samuel has carved us up on a couple, couple big, big plays. He's been the go-to guy. He's been Buzo's uh, clutch target and also Luke Musgrave having himself a good game how in the heck are the Shamrocks already to our 30 yard line that is absolutely wild a turnover here would just be absolutely kluch absolutely kluch indeed we really really need it too and I'm gonna I'm gonna send some pressure we're gonna press up and I'm gonna send some pressure Buzo is changing the play surprise surprise there he's been doing that all game and we are pressing up. Oh, get to him. Get to him. It's a pick. Marcus Peters. Thank you. Do you have the speed to outrun these linemen? Can you house this thing? Jameer Gibbs is going to catch him. Wow. I just said a turnover would be kluch. A turnover here would just be absolutely kluch. And the first real big mistake that we've seen from Jesse Buzo Jr. He's been clean up until this point. And Marcus Peters, the savvy veteran out of Washington, Gave us just the pick that we needed. But now it is up to us to capitalize on that mistake, not do something dumb. I am going to go to Kyron through most of this, but I'm going to start out. Or am I? No, I'm actually going to audible inside zone. They only got three down linemen, so I, I kind of like that look. It's a good run from Kyron. And look at the guard pushing. That was Ryan, the center, actually, Ryan Kelly. Yeah, I'm going to ride this Kyron train here for as long as they allow me to. But that time, only a pickup of two. And I don't know how. Jordan Davis is really just playing like a man possessed right now. He really is. And this honestly is, this is go for it territory. It has to be. Can't really punt the ball back to him here. So let's just uh, buckle down, play some good football. And hopefully pick this up. Wide open is Zay Jones. Haven't really called his name. That may be his first catch. He also was playing great last game. And he was, I mean, he was just butt naked there. Indecent exposure. I probably could have hit him even sooner. I was, I was looking for Kyron, really, on the check down. Let's go straight up the gut with Williams. Good blockers and Kyron. Eight touchdowns over the last two games. I think, didn't he, or... Is that the first game that he had four or the second? I think it was the second. 
at any rate, he's got a nice handful of touchdowns on this season. And we do take probably a four-point lead here. The only problem is there is four minutes to go. Jesse Buzo Jr. just made a big mistake last drive. But aside from that, he has been solid the entire game. So we put the ball in the hands of our defense, and we're just asking for one, probably one last big stand. I'll tell you, one thing we cannot do is just sit back and play conservative. I've done that before and ended up getting burned. Bobby Wagner on the blitz. Can he get, oh, Buzo with a great move. All that for one yard, but man, my dude just eluded the sack of the blitzing Bobby Wagner there. I think we're just going to go press man again. We're going to guess pass, and I've been liking this combo, having Leonard Floyd kind of drop back in coverage a little bit. That's a completion to Debo, but only for another gain of one. Debo now at seven for a buck 13, but it's going to take a little bit more than that. And I like the idea of going nickel blitz again. It seemed to work out pretty well the last time that we did it. Yaya Diaby is in coverage, and that's going to be an early breakup. Oh, my gosh. Brandon Powell, who had a couple big touchdowns in this game, should have had a big catch there. But somehow it says breakup, but let's see if that was truly a breakup. I mean, really, that could have been. Did he make a football move? Could have been a fumble, but regardless, it was great coverage by Jordan Poyer. And now we have a chance to never let Jesse and the boys get the ball back. As long as we could pick up a few first downs on this drive, we will be able to seal this one. And does anybody want to block for uh, my man Pat Pete? No? Okay. Again, going to be the Kyron Williams show for as long as they will allow it. Kyron's got the ball in his hands, dancing around back there, picking up seven. And he actually goes over the century mark. And he was struggling. He was absolutely struggling to start this one out. He has picked up the pace ever since I changed uh, the focus to, to blocking it inside. Kyron has been electric. And this should be the final play here before the two-minute warning. Let's move over one of our tight ends here, Ricky Seals-Jones. Kind of forgot he was on this team. Just barely got that out. Does anybody want to block Anzalone? Kyron says, okay, I'll do it myself. Two-minute warning has came and went. So now the Shamrocks will be using their timeouts every time the play is over. So essentially one first down ends this thing. But when you got Jordan Davis there, it doesn't always matter. I just think screen pass is the best call. I mean, I do not think that uh, we'll be able to necessarily get it with just runs but a nice block from Kyron and this could be ball game Kyron is going to be third and inches just need one first down Kyle Juszczyk lead the way for me please brother and Kyron gets it that is going to be ball game in a absolute thriller there were times where I questioned my existence in this game I did not think that we would be able to overcome what was it, 10-point deficit, I think, going into the fourth quarter. But we were able to do it. And we are going to improve to 2-1. and one. And if I don't, I should have put ball carrier on conservative here, but I didn't. But barring something unforeseen here, we are going to improve to 2-1. and one, And the Shamrocks will drop to 0-3. And, and there you have it, boys. 31-27 is your final Coach Damon Sanders likes it, and you know what? Hats off to Jesse Buzo Jr., the subscriber. You played great in this game. You had that one pick, but I had two, so you played better than me. It just came down to our defense finally stepping up there in the latter stages of this game. But you, sir, are going to be probably a staple in the SFL, I would imagine. Take a look at the stats here. Yeah, I mean, y'all played me for sure. Yardage was about equal. Completion percentage was equal. You had three picks, one touchdown. I had zero touchdowns and two picks. And this guy right here, though, Kyron Williams, 29 attempts, 111 yards, only 3.8 yards per carry. So he was a workhorse. But look at the four touchdowns. This guy just continues to impress. He better get a freaking dev upgrade next week. And then Musgrave and Samuel, they absolutely tore us apart. Kyron Williams in the past game, he was also our leading catcher. Darren Waller had a good game. Mike Coxmall had two catches for 26. And aside from that, I mean, Olave had that one bomb. Zay Jones had that one great play. But really, it came down to some timely sacks for us. We had 
four, as a matter of fact. And uh, that one pick from Peters, that was really a game changer. So very good game, exciting game. And let's check and see how all of our subscribers did with their stats here in week three. Eli Sokowitz and his Canton Condors dropped again to the Sentinels. So they're now one and two. So Sox, I'm going to need you to uh, make some big plays there on the defensive side of the ball. Let's see what you did in this one here. Eli Sokowitz, you had two tackles and two tackles. So not the best game. You had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery in the previous game. So a little quiet in this one, but uh, I'm confident you'll come back with a boom in the next game. Nick Stoyer and his San Juan Elks do get the dub 18 to 14 against the Elks. So low scoring game. Let's see how much offense was involved. Nick is a wide receiver. So taking a look at the Tiger stats, you had two for 20, but you had a big touchdown. So you and Devontae Smith each had a touchdown. So nice to see you get in the end zone and get the dub to move to two and one. Albuquerque Armadillos finally get their first loss of the season against the Dreadnoughts, who we play in this upcoming game here. So take a look and see. Uh, we got to check receiving for our brand new tight end to the league, Bjorn Jeffrey. So let's see what Bjorn was able to do. Four catches, 39 yards, and a touchdown. So nice to see our receivers getting some touchdowns. Let's check on my man, Arturo Esquivel. You had six tackles. Eight of those were solo and a sack. Big sack on, I think it was Trevor Lawrence. I saw it was the uh, Dreadnoughts quarterback. Let's see. No, Bryce Young. Okay. So a big sack on Bryce Young from Arturo Esquivel. Austin Lumberjack's going to keep pace with us. Going two, uh, two and one on the season. Let's check on our QB, Michael Yakin. See what he was up to in this game. And we can also check on our tight end, James Briner. So Yakin, I mean, he looks like a absolute beast. Over 300 yards again, which he did have over 300 last week. Three touchdowns and a pick. Outdueled Aaron Rodgers for the uh, Brooklyn Nighthawks. So that is really good to see. And then checking on my man, James Briner. Four for 43, no touchdown, but still pretty big weapon in the passing game. Going for almost 50 yards. Yeezy Fuentes and his Blues, man, just keep on winning. They are undefeated 3-0. And let's see what my man was able to do in this one. Uh, 3 for 21. Okay. No touchdowns, but still good to see you getting involved in back-to-back -back weeks. I, I don't know why. I put you in front of Jahan Dotson. They just, uh, I guess Josh Allen, just uh, more comfortable finding Jahan. But you're getting involved. It's only a matter of time before you get your first tutty of the season. I am sure. Caleb Hayes and the Paris Black Knights do drop to the Antlers. This will be his first game in SFL action. Let's see what he was able to do. Five for 56. Nice. 11.2 yards uh, average per reception. No touchdowns, but still a very, very good passing stat. Indeed, you love to see that. So I like to see that our subscribers are getting involved here. And then finally, we will round things out with our punter. Uh, you guys lost to the Voyagers, so gonna drop to one and two on the season. Let's see what type of impact you played in the punting game. So you had four punts, so not a whole lot of offense. It doesn't look like. Netted 174 net yards and had one touch, one punt inside the 20. So not too bad, 43 and a half yard average. Could be a little bit higher, but it all depends on where, you know, the field position was and things like that. But overall, good job for our subscribers. Depending on how many more people join, I'm going to have to make a whole separate episode for just the stat recap. But keep them coming, guys. Keep the comments flowing. We take on the Melbourne Dreadnoughts in the next episode. Make sure to look out for your subscriber player and see how he is progressing in the SFL. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys, as always. I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.